<laughs> All right, so what we've been talking about is just how you can use a Taylor series to sort of build a function wherever you want. And so this, if you do decide to not use the whole Taylor series, but you only want to use, like, let's say the first five terms, you call that a Taylor polynomial, okay, a Taylor polynomial. I'll give you an example of a Taylor polynomial, okay? So let's say that uh, you had the function sine x, right? The series is alternating odd powers and odd factorial matching on the bottom there. 2n plus 1 factorial, right? That's the Taylor series. Since it's technically at 0, this was designed at 0, it is also called the Maclaurin series. So it has kind of two names, unfortunately. It's also called a power series. So in a way, it kind of has three names. So Maclaurin series so. is centered at 0. Taylor series can be centered anywhere. That's right. Okay. Yeah, you're right. So this is the full series, though, right? Like it's the whole of my movie. It's got all the infinite terms, right? But if you wanted to sort of truncate it and just pick like the first three terms, it would look more like this x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. This is a Taylor polynomial. So what is the difference between a Taylor series and a Taylor polynomial? The Taylor polynomial ends, the series doesn't end. Okay? That's kind of the easy way to understand it. All right. So Taylor polynomial, you can see it actually right here. Look, see how it ends with this nth term? There's no dot, dot, dot after that. That's a Taylor polynomial. OK. Now, we don't call it nth degree Taylor polynomial. We don't call it nth degree. We call it nth order Taylor polynomial. And here's the reason why. Sometimes the last term is 0. So you might be trying to find a fourth degree, and you suddenly realize there isn't one. For example, look at sine x again. I'm going to write it one more time. Sine x basically goes like this. x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus x to the seventh over 7 factorial. OK? How did we get this? If you remember, we actually took the derivative. Uh, like five or six times, seven or eight times, and we found coefficients. So we actually did it like this. We did sine of x is sine of 0 plus sine of 0's uh, derivative. So sine of, you know, the derivative at 0, I should say. The derivative at 0 over 1 factorial times x plus the second derivative of sine measured at 0 over 2 factorial x squared. Remember that? Well, when you get to the fourth derivative, you find that there is no term. Because some of this stuff is 0. See, this is actually 0 plus 1 over 1 factorial x plus 0 plus negative 1 over 2 factorial, or sorry, uh, negative 1 over 3 factorial x cubed plus 0. In other words, there is no x to the fourth term. The next term is actually 1 over 5 factorial x to the fifth. So even though you tried to do four derivatives and create a nice little quartic function with four powers, it never existed. It never happened. The fourth derivative was 0, unfortunately. So you never got that term. So it's just kind of not a good idea to call, like if you do five derivatives, right, you're going to get you're going to end with x to the fifth, okay? But you don't want to call it a degree 5 polynomial. You want to call it an order 5 polynomial because otherwise if you had done only four derivatives, it's actually a cubic, you see? If you do four derivatives, you end up with a cubic answer, not a fourth degree answer because there's no fourth term. There's no fourth degree term. So we don't typically call it nth degree Taylor polynomial. We call it an nth order. The order is just how many derivatives you tried. Okay, think of it that way. I'll make a note of that. 
how many derivatives you did. Okay, so if you take six derivatives, it's called sixth order. If you take 20 derivatives, it's called 20th order. But it may or not may not match with the degree of that term. All right. So even though you're doing a fourth order Taylor polynomial for sine, it only has degree three. After four derivatives, you still only have a cubic. There's no fourth term. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and try to find a, a, a nth order Taylor polynomial at the given value of a. All right, so this is really not very hard. It's intimidating, but it is not hard. Let me show you how to do this next example. All right, so you actually can always model a function at 1 by doing f of 1 plus f prime of 1 over 1 factorial times x minus 1 to the first plus f double prime at 1 over 2 factorial times x minus 1 to the second, plus f triple prime at 1 over 3 factorial times x minus 1 to the third. Now I'd keep going, except it actually told me to stop when I reached n equals 3. It actually kind of says to stop at n equals 3. Okay. So this is kind of what you do. You just sort of set it all up, get it all ready. Then you go back, and maybe on the side of your paper, you find f of 1, f prime of 1, f double prime of 1, f triple prime of 1, and you stick them in these four spaces right here. OK, you'll be just filling these in. These are just numbers, you see. It's not that hard. OK, so it just feels like a lot. Let's try it real quick. So f of 1 is 2 plus 1 plus 3 minus 8. Basically, that's just negative 2. No big deal. Okay, so I'm not going to show all my work for that. That's just f of 1 is when you plug in 1. f prime at 1, you're going to take the derivative, so 6x squared plus 2x plus 3, then you'll plug in 1. Mm, so that comes out to 11. Second derivative at 1 would be 12x plus 2, and you're plugging in 1. In other words, that's 14. And the third derivative at 1, the third derivative is just 12, so there's nowhere really to plug in a 1. So that just simply comes out to 12. Now, there's no point in really continuing on this problem, because if you go on to find fourth order, the next derivative is 0, and every derivative after that is 0. But they told us to stop at 3 anyway. Okay, so we're done. Those replace the four green objects up above. Okay. So these are your four green numbers. Let's stick them in. So f of x equals f of 1, that's negative 2, plus f prime of 1, that's 11. I'm not going to write over 1 factorial. That's just silly times x minus 1 to the first, right? Plus, now I've got f double prime over 2. f double prime came out to 14, remember? So that would be a 7. And f triple prime came out to 12, but I'm dividing by 3 times 2 times 1. So this just basically becomes a 2. And this is your answer. This is the third order Taylor polynomial centered at 1. Okay, this is kind of a silly example in a lot of ways. First of all, we started with a polynomial, and we built a polynomial right on top of it. In fact, it's the same exact polynomial. This is the exact same thing as that. If you boil it out, you'll see it's exactly the same as what we started with. But the look of it is a little bit different. Okay? This is all sort of centered at x equals 0. This is centered at x equals 1. So it's kind of silly in a way because we just rewrote the same polynomial. And it's a perfect match for that. It's identical to that. Sometimes the polynomial is only a sort of good match for the function. Here it's perfect. But yeah, question? So if we were plugging in 0 and then just use x, it would have been the same exact thing? 
Yes, if we had found the McLaurin series for this, it would have returned the exact same thing we started with. That's right. But we didn't find a McLaurin series. We found a Taylor series at one. So it does look a little different in disguise. But I'm telling you, if you distribute this 11, and you distribute this 7, and you distribute this 2, it takes you right back to home plate. OK? So I guess it's kind of silly to model a polynomial with a polynomial. But you get the feel for how to set them up, right? That's why I did that example. And the book does it too, so I just thought I would. Let's try the, the next one. Now, this, of course, is e to the x over 2. That's not a polynomial. So if we're going to write it as a polynomial, it won't be a perfect match, of course. But we're going to follow the exact same steps. We're still doing a equals 1. So this time we're going to go all the way out to n equals 4, though, in terms of, like, number of terms to do. So let's give it a try here. So f of x should be f of 1 plus f prime at 1 over 1 factorial times x minus 1 plus f double prime at 1 over 2 factorial x minus 1 squared f triple prime at 1 over 3 factorial x minus 1 cubed. And they want one more. The fourth derivative at 1 over 4 factorial x minus 1 to the fourth. How do I know to stop? It tells me right here. n equals 4. OK, so before you panic, remember these are just numbers, right? all of these. And it's an exponential, so the derivative is going to be easy. You can do 100 derivatives here, right? It's just e to the x, e to the x, e to the x, you know? Um, technically, there's a little chain rule going on here. It's really e to the half x, right? So when you find basically f of 1, that's e to the x over 2, and you're plugging in 1. So that's just e to the half, or you could put rad e. That doesn't even count as a derivative. That's like the zeroth derivative, you could say. When you do f prime at 1, you take the derivative, and you get 1 half e to the x over 2. And you plug in 1. And you get 1 half e to the half. In other words, it's root e over 2. We're supposed to do four derivatives total. The next one is 1 fourth e to the x over 2. You're plugging in 1. So it's 1 fourth e to the half, or you could say root e over 4. This is just geometric. I mean, you could guess the next three terms, right, if you wanted. We only need two more terms, though. See a pattern? What's the next one going to be? Root e over what? 8. And our fourth derivative at 1, root e over what? 16. If you don't believe me, you should show your work, actually. Okay? But sometimes we get lucky and we see a pattern right away. It's pretty rare, though. All right, now those replace the greens. Right? That's the idea. So this is going to become a rad e. This is going to become a rad e over 2. This is going to become a rad e over 4. This is going to become a rad e over 8. And this is going to become a rad e over 16. And I do need to erase my scratch work. Can I erase my scratch work? OK, this part's not that important anyway. So we just got our coefficients started here. OK, here comes. Evidently, e to the x over 2 is technically an infinitely long polynomial, but it can be approximated using what we call p sub 4, the fourth order Taylor polynomial, which is rad e plus rad e over 2 x minus 1 plus rad e over 8 x minus 1 squared plus rad e over, hmm, what's 8 times 6? 48. And uh, what's 16 times 24? 24. I think it's 384. Rad e over 384 x minus 1 to the fourth. OK, question? 
So I've already divided by the one factorial, two factorial, three factorial, four factorial. I've already included that in my coefficients. So this was root e over 16, but then I divided by 24 again, so it's root e over 384. Okay, if you go on Wolfram Alpha and you type, give me the series expansion for e to the half x, first four terms, it will pretty much figure out what you want and spit this out. Sometimes it misunderstands your question, you have to retype a little bit, type a little more wordy, type a little less wordy. Once you finally realize it's, ask, it's understanding you, it will actually return this for you. Along with all sorts of other things, like a neat graph of polynomial and how well it fits e to the half x. You see? <coughs> but that's how you do it. It's really not that hard. It's messy, but it's not that hard. Okay, so I regret this lesson in a way. I lost some of you yesterday because there was there were like several pages of intro to get to the examples. And I apologize for that, but there was no examples yesterday. It was just all straight lecture, just getting the theory out of the way so we could do the problems. Look how easy they really are. They're not that hard. So I apologize for that. I put you to sleep. Far be it from me to make calculus look boring, because it is not boring at all. It's a beautiful subject. So I, I'm sorry if I made it look boring yesterday. Okay? All right. There's some things in life it's a crime to ruin, and calculus is one of them. <laughs> I just didn't know how to give examples until I had stated all the facts up front, you know? This is kind of how I feel about this particular topic. But you can see that's not that hard. Uh, you will be getting a study guide today in the email 